Okay, people of God, I want to chime in on some things, uh, share some things um, with some <laughs> pretty recent events or whatever. Uh, first and foremost, I want to encourage you, you know, people of God, to don't get into debates and arguments with fools. You know, sometimes on social media, you know, we want to, you know, evangelize, share our faith in Jesus Christ and give people the word of God. Uh but we have to understand some people. Jesus Christ made something very clear. Um, Matthew chapter 7, verse verse 6. He says, Do not give what is holy to dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn around and tear you in pieces. <clears throat> dogs and pigs, you know, they trample the pearls under, sweet, under their feet, which means that they don't value the kingdom. They don't value the gospel. They don't value the importance of the gospel. And so this is why the old, the, you know, the Bible talks about how in the last days there'll be mockers and scoffers and everything. And even in Psalms chapter one, it talks about don't sit in the seat of the scornful or in uh, uh, the, the, the place of the mockers. You know, uh, mockers have no regards to anything that you're saying. They're bent on being Afrocentric. They're bent on being atheists. They're bent on being Wiccans or whatever. And they are actually just looking for the opportunity to get in arguments with Christians, to try to get someone to react in their flesh. See, Jesus Christ also <clears throat> warned his disciples, you know, when you go into a city, when you go into to a house and everything, and it's worthy of peace, you know, you bless it, whatever. But if they do not want to hear the gospel of the kingdom, Jesus Christ says, listen, don't stay there. Shake the dust off your feet and keep it moving. Don't sit there, don't debate, don't argue with them. So, excuse me. So, uh, he said, don't, 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 don't dwell there. Just, just keep moving. And oftentimes what we do people is that we can easily, because we want to prove our point so bad and want to make sure that we're right. The other person is wrong. Uh, we don't want to uh, walk in that type of attitude. That's just something that that uh, I had a, a, a habit of doing because I'm not going to let nobody out debate me or whatever. But uh, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit began to, you know, really, you know, show me that, listen, you don't you don't have to defend God. You know, uh, the word of God defends itself. I saw a meme one day. There was a, a lion. It was a lion and it, it, and it was like a lion showing his teeth and and just kind of snarling a little bit. I love lions. Um, and it says the truth. You don't have to defend the truth. Just let it loose. It will defend itself. <clears throat> and I thought that was a very powerful meme a powerful statement and and that is something that we want to take hold people you know especially when it comes to dealing with family members because oftentimes because of family members they're so familiar with us they know us when we were out there in the world we were backslidden they know the ins and outs of us and saw us grow up and so now that we're new creatures in christ jesus they oftentimes don't see that or they have an issue with you because you know the word of God and you know who Jesus Christ is. You led by the spirit. You hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and you try to share things with them and they don't want to receive it because it's coming from you. And this it can be difficult. It can be challenging, you know. And so I want to encourage you when you're facing issues like that, you want to just keep things in prayer. Because if you know you have certain discussions, you know they get ready to come over to the house on July 4th or whatever, barbecue, and since it's the summertime coming up or, you know, the holidays, whatever, you know they're going to come over and you know that such and such is going to bring up some kind of topic about politics or whatever. And you're going to give your biblical view about it. And it's all going to be a civil war in the household. So you want to avoid that. So the thing you want to do, people, is to address this in prayer. See, when it comes to family, look what happened with Joseph. You know, his own brothers, you know, did him in, you know, uh, because he was called by God and God had a plan for his life. You know, Joseph shouldn't open up his mouth, but he did anyway and that got him in a boatload of trouble but god ended up turning around you know sometimes we try to think we can help god out by you know declaring who we are in god and and all this other stuff people all you gotta do is let your lifestyle speak for itself let the holy spirit and the fruits of the spirit manifest through your lifestyle that is the way to really reach and touch your family Sometimes because they, they, they can't, they don't receive, you know, from you. Jesus Christ faced this, you know, he couldn't do many works in his, in a, uh, uh, in, in a city 
because of the people's doubt and unbelief of him. Why? Because they were familiar with him. Isn't this the son of Mary? Isn't this, you know, does it doesn't he have uh brothers, uh James and John? Uh, you know, it wasn't he wasn't this the, the young child that was born here and everything? So they became so familiar with Jesus Christ that they didn't believe, you know, who he said he was because they watched him grow. You know, they were so familiar with him. So, and that's oftentimes, unfortunately, what happens in a lot of times with, with families, you know, is that, you know, because of you, you know, you, you, your, your lifestyle has changed. You've been born again by the spirit of God and you you understand the things of the kingdom of God. You just want to see your family members come to Christ. The way you do this, people of God, is to uh, attack this stuff in prayer. <laughs> Excuse me. In your prayer closet, in your prayer time, you know, we've all got family members that, you know, backlash, retaliate against us, say the wrong comments towards us, or, you know, you try to invite them to church and all of a sudden it turns into another argument. Now they getting in their flesh, you and your, they already in their flesh, you and your flesh. And then, you know, the Bible specifically says in the book of Proverbs, when words are many, sin is not far off. So you best believe while you're going back and forth with them, eventually sin is going to be committed because somebody is going to say something, primarily probably you, uh, <laughs> with, our born, with, with our born again selves, are going to say something to try to really cut, to, you know, to that family member, you know, and, and it's something because they're already in their flesh. You know, you don't need to get in your flesh. You don't need to get involved in all kind of arguments and all this other stuff. Uh, you know, were they trying to deface or were they trying to come against the Bible, trying to come against, you know, God or try to say what God wants you to do as a Christian and they ain't even saved. But they trying to tell you how you supposed to live and how you supposed to be as a Christian. People let the word of God defend itself. It does. A, it's been doing it for over 2000 years and been showing that men, whether they are in living according to the word of God or not living according to the word of God, they're fulfilling biblical prophecy anyway. OK, so um, you remember, the, you know, uh, for some of you that have uh, younger siblings, how when they did something wrong, the parent, your parent would get on them or your guardian would get on them. But when you did something wrong, it seemed like you would get it worse. Why? Because they said, you know, better. You're the oldest. You know better. You're older than them. You should know better. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. That when you get into debates with your family members or whatever, arguing, the conviction of the Holy Spirit comes upon your heart. It's because you know better. The Holy Spirit is going to deal with you first. You forgive them. You release them. Okay. So I just want to encourage you, please, you know, address that in prayer when it comes to family members and loved ones that you want to see, you know, uh, want to see, you know, born again, you know, uh, one of the things I do is, is oftentimes, uh, uh, take time to pray at night, you know, uh, the time where everybody is sleeping and everything. That's the time where there's the most spiritual, you know, activity that takes place, you know, is at night when people are resting, you know, when I, uh, do like teaches on deliverance and spiritual warfare, which I've done on my, uh, uh, previous videos on this channel, especially, I believe, uh, I really started hitting on it when I dealt with kingdom living for the family. I started touching on spiritual warfare and deliverance. And, and one of the things is that to hit, hit and attack stuff in prayer with spiritual warfare, because we want to see our family members saved, their souls saved. And so there's things that need to be broken, you know, scales that come off their eyes and their hearts spiritually, you know, where there's hardness of heart. Jesus Christ says, when I knock at you at the door, do not harden your heart. The hardness of heart is what's keeping people from receiving the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why uh, the word of God says, you know, no man can come into me else. The spirit of God draws them. Uh, you know, we got to pray for the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God to shine unto our family members and loved ones begin to pray lord send the right vessels their way send men to the to the uncles the uncles the brothers the fathers in my family send the righteous women to my sisters and uh aunties and grandmothers in my family uh nieces and all of that stuff so you want to hit that in prayer begin to bind up the hunter of their souls begin to say father in the name of jesus i take authority and i bind the hunter of the souls that is trying to uh destroy or try to pull my loved one and 
and and call that number that loved one out by name. My loved one, that Jimmy, that's that that that's backslidden, that that is bowed down to false gods. Lord, I pray, send fire, send your angels with swords of fire to cut the cords of, of every mind blinding spirit, of every destiny pirate spirit, of of every spirit that's trying to hunt their souls and trying to destroy their lives. Father God, do not let them be met with premature death or destruction. But I just break and cancel all demonic assignments that's trying to take my loved ones out before their time and trying to keep them from receiving the salvation of the Lord. So Lord, let the light of the salvation of Jesus Christ shine unto them in Jesus name. And just begin to, begin to uh, use the word of God, people of God, uh, to, to, uh, to address things in, in prayer. And I'm going to tell you something, people don't try to intervene. Okay. Let the Lord deal with them. When they start facing certain issues in their life and everything, let the Lord deal and work with them because it's through godly sorrow that which work is repentance. All right. So I just want to encourage you, you know, uh, first and foremost, don't argue with fools. You know, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So you can share the scripture with them when they want to talk about God as a fairy tale. And God is this. It's, it's amazing how, you know, when you mention the tooth fairy or Santa Claus, which I, I don't, you know, but just for, for just for the sake of this uh, particular point I want to make, you can bring up the tooth fairy, Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, all that stuff. People don't get offended. But when you bring up Jesus Christ's name, all of a sudden they get in outrage and everything. So if the tooth fairy and Santa Claus and them ain't real and you think that Jesus Christ ain't real, but yet you getting offended then, you know, about Jesus Christ, it's because you know he is real. All right. They don't get upset over the tooth fairy and Santa Claus and Easter Bunny when you mention that because they know they're not real. But they get upset when you mention Jesus Christ and God the Father because deep down inside they know he is real. That's why Romans chapter one says, listen, you know, even the, the, the people uh, who, who who see, you know, the, the, the visible attributes of God, they know that God is, you know, they know the judgments of God, but they want to deny him. They want to suppress that knowledge of God because they want to continue on doing what they're doing. So don't argue with fools, people of God. And that's something that I'm personally, you know, working on myself uh, because sometimes when you're doing these videos and I'm hitting on uh, certain things or I see other ministers hitting on things, you know, especially when it comes to really when it comes to the role of women and men, you know, in, in whether it's in the ministry, in the church, or whether it's in, especially in the household, then if, uh, the ones I've, ex what I've experienced is that how, Certain women will come to the post and try to challenge and try to, you know, question this and question that and everything, even though I've given biblical examples and biblical accounts and scriptures and kept things in context. They still want to rise up and try to fight and try to challenge against us. Why? Because they have their own motive. They have selfish ambition. And that is what happens when people who do not want to take the full counsel of God, they got to try to find a way to where they think they have created or have found a loophole to continue on being in rebellion or being out of order. Which brings me to my next, you know, uh, point that I want to bring up. This whole thing with, you know, a Steph Curry. Now, I watch basketball. Actually, I like the way the Golden State Warriors play. You know, some people have issues with sports and everything and all that stuff. But I play sports, you know, uh, pretty much my, you know, my younger years in, in life. And it was great, you know, being a part of a team, you know, exercising, working out, trying out for major league ball clubs, doing all that stuff, all that fun and dandy stuff. It was, it was great. You know, I just grew up like watching sports and everything. So, uh, but this issue and I, and I bring her name up because this shows the condition. The, I use her for an example, not to bash or anything like that. But it kind of shows a condition of what is taking place in a lot of uh, ministries, what's taking place in a lot of women's minds, you know, mindsets and, and also men as well. Uh, but anyway, if you haven't know, if you ever if you didn't know, Steph Curry's wife, he's a famous basketball player that's playing in the, on the Gold State Warriors right now. Um, she goes on Jada Pickett's Jada Pickett Smith talk show i guess it's called table talk or whatever and she goes on there and pretty much says that you know she wants it her husband gets all the attention because he's an nba superstar and everything and and she wants you know men to to, to, to look at her she wants to be noticed so she I, I saw how she came out with her own little uh business she had her own little commercial ad and everything and uh 
My thing is this, <laughs> biblically, you know, Titus chapter two, you cannot emphasize this enough. Titus chapter two, women, be discreet, be chaste, be good homemakers, you know, lovers of your husband and, and, and the good homemakers. That's what Titus chapter two tells the older women that teach the younger women. See, when she goes on that show and says what she says, you done, she's a, she has put her husband on, on blast already because she's not getting the attention that she wants, all right? And now she's looking for validation outside the home instead of being a, you know, at-home mother. I mean, this this lady has anything that a lot of women would, would, would love to have, a husband that goes to work. You know, in his, his case, he's a multimillionaire, you know, and uh, they have a, a when you look at the pictures of their family, a beautiful looking family and children and everything. But that's not good enough for her. And that's what I talk about. Husbands, you know, protect and cover your wives from these strange voices. That's what got Eve deceived, listening to the wrong voice. And because Adam did not shut the voice down, look at what happened. Sin crept in discontentment, not satisfied with the way God created her and who God created her to be, which was to be a helpmate to her husband. She became discontent. Okay. Which led to selfish ambition because we know, you know, when I, you have to look at my video on role reversal and everything, how she saw the fruit first and desire, you know, cause she knew what it would do would make her, you know, like God, which is what the devil said it would do. Uh, so having a knowledge of good and evil. So anyway, she goes on Jada Pickett Smith's show. Now, the Bible says in Psalms chapter one, blessed is a man who does not sit in this, uh, uh, not walk in the pathway of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful, nor delight in the counsel of the ungodly. Look here. She should have never even went on that show. And, and I say that because uh, both of them, you know, they, they profess that they're Christians and everything, even though. Steph loves him some Obama, which is uh, Obama is is, is anti-Christ to the core. When you look at June next month, when you see all these gay pride events, which is going to be amped up to all kind of perversion is going to be at an all time high. All the men walking around naked at these gay pride, exposing their genitals and everything to children and got their children walking around. Now they made this little drag, a drag queen, little boy, a superstar. Uh, uh, in, in the eyes of, of people in the media and everything, and the media is really pushing this stuff. Uh, now they got the show, uh, and I'm, I know I'm getting off track a little bit, but that that little cartoon show Arthur, where this uh, this guy on this show, um, let me see what his name is. His name is Mister uh, uh, Ratburn. He's coming out as a gay. A uh, person because he's getting married. This is on a show, Arthur, that comes on PBS right in front of the eyes of your children. And and the way this gets stuff gets shut down is through a uh, righteous men and righteous women raising their children and protecting their children. See, the Bible says, when the hedge is broken, the serpent will bite. Okay, and so you must protect your children from these demonic, uh, deceiving spirits that's trying to manifest in through cartoons. Trying to manifest through cartoons. When I was coming, we had nothing. We didn't have to worry about stuff like that. We saw Tom and Jerry, the Flintstones, you know, things of that nature. But now they're trying to really push this homosexual agenda. And the medium is also is being a vehicle of the devil to do so. OK, and so they go on and they, they, they're putting this stuff up because the devil is always after the next generation. That's why when you read, I believe, in the book of, uh, of Judges, when it says there arose a generation that did not know God, they did not know God nor his ways. Why? Because the parents or the generation before them did not teach them the ways of God. Okay. And so anyway, we don't, don't, when we don't lay the foundation of Jesus Christ and our children, the world is going to try to influence and seduce them by putting up these images constantly before your children to seduce and lure them away to walk after the God of this world, to walk after the rudiments of this world, to bow down to the prince of the power of the air. And how they do that by embracing the doctrines, by embracing the world's philosophy, by embracing the world's view. All right. And unfortunately, many churches are taking their cues from the world because they stop preaching against sin, stop standing against sin. And as a result, they start being what the world wants them to be instead of what Christ calls us to be, which is his body which is uh, uh, we are we are, are 
are, are created, you know, uh, well, excuse me, that Jesus Christ is the head of the church, you know, and upon this rock, he will build his church, upon a rock of Jesus Christ being the savior, being the king, being the Lord, and upon this rock, he will build the church, and the gates of hell will not prevail, be able to resist against the church. As a church, we have an apostolic charge and mandate to advance the kingdom of God. And so in order to advance the kingdom, then you have got to preach the things of the kingdom of God, no matter who it offends, no matter who doesn't like it, no matter when it's convenient or not convenient, you have to stand on the word of God in order to be called a disciple of Jesus Christ. One of the things that Revelation, the book of Revelation, I believe chapter 20 or 21 says that a person who will be outside of the kingdom of God, who will be outside the gates are the cowardly. Those that are bound down to the world and too afraid to call sin, sin. So anyway, <laughs> went down that road. But anyway, back to uh, what Steph Curry's wife has done. And, and I say this because this is what has, what has been a, the condition taking place in a lot of ministries. And I'm going to tell you this right now. When I'm talking about ministries, I'm, I'm certain ministries, I'm only talking about the ones I'm talking about. Uh, and, I, and, and, and I encourage you to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit because some of the things I may bring up or whatever, you may have seen the signs of it. You may have, you know, recognized it. And that's the Holy Spirit's way of, of ministering to you. Uh, but in no way am I discouraging or encouraging anybody from attending a local assembly, the right local assembly, you know, because the Bible encourages us to not to forsake ourselves from gathering together. And some people say, well, I can gather with the saints of God in my home and everything. I can do that in my home. No, people. Listen, that's that the fellowship and stuff with fellow brothers and sisters in Christ are important. But the Bible specifically says that Jesus Christ had put some in the church, not in your household, some in the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints to do the work of the ministry. And if you notice in the New Testament, many of the writings were written directly to churches that the church of Thessalonica, you see the church of Sardis, you see the church of Philip, you see the church of Ephesus. Okay. You see these different churches, people. This is where people, Christians gathered and they had leaders over them. All right. And so I'm not trying to discourage anybody. I know we got, we see a lot of things going on in, in churches. Why? Because you got social media now. You can see everything, you know, people are doing. And because of their foolishness and their boastfulness, their glorying in their shame, they put it out there for the world to see. And now people are getting a bad taste in their mouth uh, about uh, churches and think all churches are the same. And they're not people. There are some true men of God that are leading their churches by the Holy Spirit. Okay. And so I'm, when I'm talking about this stuff, I'm not, okay. So, uh, I'm not talking about every single ministry. I'm not painting them all with the same brush. All right. So, um, but back to this whole thing with Steph Curry's wife. And I said that, you know, a lot of this stuff is coming from because of what is not being taught. And that is the roles of the husband and wife in the home and how that coincides with the leadership of the church, you know, with the husband leading and covering his wife and for her to go on a show, a secular talk show. And you know how, you know, I've already expressed about that. No Christian needs to be going on these secular talk shows. I mean, you, you you're not going on there to try to get them to repent. They, they, they're trying to use you for their own ratings or whatever. But anyway, uh, um, and unless you're going to go in there and just storm the gates and just really, hey, y'all, you need to repent, you know, and I'm just going to preach the gospel right here on your secular talk show. Uh, unless you're going on there to do that full throttle, then uh, you shouldn't be going on those talk shows anyway, because they're going to try to get you to compromise. And it's for ratings. And and we see how effective that has been because every major bishop or or church, you know, uh, excuse me, or gospel artist that have went on these secular shows and secular TV programs. You don't see them talk about anything about Jesus Christ. They water everything down because they just want to be friendly and they just want to make sure that they don't offend anybody. OK, uh, so. Um, despite Jesus Christ saying the world is going to hate you because of me, but they want to be friends with the world anyway. So anyway, but they go. She went on this show. And, 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 and to get advice or to talk to and express her feelings to Jada Pika Smith, Jada Pika Smith. 
and her husband are swingers, okay? They exchange spouses, all right? Having sex with other people and all this other stuff. And, I mean, look at their own children. They, their, their son don't even want to be identified as a as a boy, you know, whatever. And he's wearing dresses and stuff. Even their daughter, you know, is, is shaving her head and everything. They don't even want to be identified as human. They challenge the creation order of God and everything. And so their own household is out of order. You know, so what kind of counsel you think you're going to get from wicked people? You know, the, what kind of counsel? Why, why would you go on that show? Selfish ambition, people, because they're desiring the things of this world. They're covetous. And and unfortunately, many women uh, uh, that, that, that follow, you know, Steph Curry's wife on Instagram, whatever, or, or, or whatever, you know, many women are like this, even in churches where they don't think being an at home mother is important. They don't think being at home, you know, raising their children, spending time with their children, nurturing their children is important because you don't have the lights, camera in action. You know, you don't have, you know, the the spotlight on you. And so what they do is they become discontent and they try to find ways to where attention can be brought to themselves, which is why they always go on social media. They always showing off their bodies. They always showing off their new eyelashes and taking selfies. I mean, 30, 40, 50 selfies all in a, in a, in a week, every other day, just so they can get the comments of other people. OK, because they're not content with being a wife, with being a, 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 a good homemaker. Then the Bible say that godliness, that, that, that godliness with contentment is much gain is great gain. OK, it's not gain equals godliness. No matter how many social media likes you get or how many people comment on your Facebook posts or, or your YouTube channel, and everything. That don't mean you have God because you got everybody, you know, applauding you. The Bible says, be weary when men, when, when men speak highly of you, when multitudes of people speak highly of you, watch out. Because if you allow yourself to get, uh, become boastful and, and, and to, and to gleam off of that, you're going to be brought down. They will bring you down. The same ones that you are looking to applaud you are all the time. The same ones that are speaking highly of you will be the same ones that will tear you down in a next breath. All right. So uh, this is the reason why we see this stuff, because a lot of times and I'm dealing with the women because of, you know, what the, the example is, uh, you know, what we saw was uh, Steph Curry's wife. Is because, you know, with with that discontentment, they start looking for validation from other places. They start reaching for the world. They start mimicking and doing what the world is doing. The women of God, be content with who you are in Jesus Christ. Just love the Lord with all your heart. Be a good homemaker, okay? Husbands, cover your wives because just like this example that we're seeing with this woman, she's listening to the wrong voice because the husband is not affirming her. The husband is not building, the, the husband is not being as, as consistent in building her up. See, these kind of, that conversation, that shouldn't have took place on uh, uh, Jada Pika Smith's show. That should have took place at home. That's between, that should be, you know, why is that between you and your husband? Don't go to somebody whose marriage is in shambles or whose marriage is already full of all kind of uh, immoral practices. Don't go to them. You need to talk with your husband. That's why the Bible says, why submit yourself to your husband then everything. But he won't listen when you take it up to the Lord in prayer. Okay. And this brings me to my next point. Uh, because when you have, you know, uh, women doing stuff like this, this is where a lot of the stuff that takes place on social media with all these, you know, uh, different women got the, you know, calling themselves apostles and doing all these other teachings and everything and trying to uh, teach and teach and teach. But I'm going to ask you, when is the last time you've seen, you know, these women's husbands? When is the last time you've seen these women actually emphasize the importance of Titus chapter two? They don't want to teach that. OK, you know Why? Because they're looking to be exalted, they want to be they want to be the one with the spotlight on them. All right, they want to be the one you know show to get the applause from everybody. And, and men do it too, but I'm dealing with the women on this one, okay? Because a lot of these so-called women's conferences, they never they, ask yourself when is the last time you seen them highlight uh, Titus chapter two or about why it's meant to their husbands or about uh you know I believe it's in um was a Colossians, I think yeah, don't quote me on that. But anyway, when it says, uh, uh, um, when the apostle wrote and said, uh, 
Sarah called Abraham her Lord, whose daughters you are if you obey, whose daughters you are. The apostle never used any other woman in the Bible to describe them, uh, a woman being submissive to her husband, but he used, he used Sarah, Abraham's wife, the one the Bible calls the father of faith, okay? So uh, when we see this stuff, people, when you see all these women doing all these YouTube channels, you did teaching, Facebook teaching and everything, when is the last time you've seen them, excuse me, highlight being a, a, a good mother, being a good homemaker? They don't. And the reason why they don't is because them, them, they themselves are not occupying and fulfilling that role. Why? Because they're too busy on the camera looking for social media likes, looking for Facebook likes, looking for who likes their, 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 uh, their words that they're giving on, on, on YouTube and everything. All right. The same thing even with men, you know, instead of taking care of their own household, they on a the camera every single day. I got a word for you. I'm just going to encourage you in the Lord today and everything. Look here, share that word with your children, man. Make sure that that word is being shared with your children. Make sure you're sitting your children and your wife down, washing them with the watering of the word. All right. Quit trying to use the social media as a platform for you to get your name out there so you can think you can get yourself invited to somebody's church so you can get some kind of honorarium and you can go ahead and just go full time on social media for and call that your ministry. Social media is not your ministry. All right. Social media, we will use this, you know, for uh, to, to, to encourage each other, to to share the word of God and everything and keep things in biblical context to do that. But in no way am I calling this my ministry. It's not. My ministry is my family in the household. All right. How I live my life according to the word of God when I go outside, you know, the walls of my home. That's the ministry. Not social media. This is why as ministers, you know, uh, people of God, as Christians, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we cannot get caught up in, you know, how many subscribers we got. That's why I said don't argue with fools because some people, they, they only do this stuff for subscriptions to get subscribers, to see how many people like them. That's why they can't wait to do another, you know, a Facebook watch live event, watch party event. They can't wait to do another live YouTube recording and everything. They just can't, they just can't wait. Why? Because they're gravitating. They like to feed and gorge themselves on the applause of people and who likes them. That's why the, every time they do their little Facebook live, you know, event. All right. Tell somebody I'm on now. Tell somebody I'm on. Call them, call them, call them, call them. And, and you know, tell them y'all need to sow into this. Y'all need to sow into this and everything. Calling themselves prophets and all this other stuff. People quit being deceived. You do not know the lifestyle of the pe these people behind this camera. Behind these cameras, you do not know the lifestyle, but by the Holy Spirit, you can discern if someone is of God and if someone is full of themselves. By the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says we're to know those that labor amongst us. See, it's something, you know, something very powerful that took place. I'm kind of getting off a little bit, but it's okay. Something powerful took place between Jesus Christ and John the Baptist when they were in the mother's womb. When the mothers met, it said that the baby jumped and leaped in the womb. Why? Because the Holy Spirit identifies the people of God. The Holy Spirit, there's an identification that takes place when you, I heard Paul Washer say something and maybe I kind of uh, chopped that up a little bit, but he said something, he said, the power of the Holy Spirit is like this. You can get on a plane, never met a person that you sit next to in your life. And the moment you started talking, the, the Spirit of God instantly identifies that person as a child of God. And you know both of you are Christians just by your a simple conversation that you had. Hello, how are you doing? Immediately you can tell this person is a child of God. This is my brother or sister in the Lord. Instantly, people. That's what you have to have is this sermon in this hour. And because I'm going to jump into this covetousness thing again, is because you can tell people by their fruits, the things that come out of their mouth, the things that they're constantly trying to promote, the things that they're constantly trying to push forth, that only benefits them and exalts them. All right. Yeah, they can share good words and everything, you know, uh, 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 
uh, give Hebrew terminology, Greek terminology and everything, strong concordance, the keys and all that other stuff. They're very eloquent in their speech and everything. When it comes down to it, you start recognizing that fruit because you start hearing certain things come out of their mouth to where they want you to sow into them instead of them being a blessing and freely given to you. That's why Jesus told his disciples, freely you have received, so freely give. Okay, so I wanted to share that. And then all the, the other thing is that uh, when we look at, um, again, this condition that we see uh, with a lot of women uh, uh, becoming discontent, wanting to be over men, wanting to lead men, wanting to be over ministries and everything because they're discontent with their role of just simply being a helpmate. See, when things are done in God's order, when people are operating in God's order, that's where the blessings flow. The moment you try to strive and try to put yourself out there, try to bring yourself in front of your husband, try to lead over your husband, try to lead over men in ministry. The moment you try to make yourself known women and you all you want to do is constantly be on social media, showing your eyelashes, showing your hair, taking all these selfies and everything. That's when all that stress, unnecessary anxiety and all the uh, spiritual attacks begin to happen because you're exalting yourself. OK, and you're going to be brought down. And that's why, husbands, you need to cover your wives. You need to be giving your wives affirmation. You need to tell her how important she is to you, how important her role is. You need to be praying with your wife. I mean, my goodness, it's, it's amazing how so many people, you know, these married couples are saying that they're saved. They don't even pray together. They don't even pray for each other. Husband has his personal prayer time. Wife has her personal prayer time. Children, they just off doing whatever. Nobody come together and pray as a family. The husband and wife don't even pray together. Okay. Now to you single ladies, okay, you know, because I know there's, there's some that may watch and everything and single men, listen, prepare your heart you know, uh, 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 for the Lord, stay focused on him, find yourself, you know, uh, working and, uh, and, you know, it, with, whether it's being in the ministry and everything, don't be a busy by it. Don't be getting caught up in everybody else's affairs and men don't get entangled up in this cares and concerns of this world, uh, of this world, but you focus on allowing the Lord to work in your heart, to be a leader, to be a head of your household. Okay. So women don't give up hope. You know, there's some righteous men out there and everything, but until that man finds you, not you go after him. Okay. Not you pursuing him, not you, you know what they doing on social media nowadays with a, what a woman is proposing to this man. Okay. Find yourself submitting to the Lord and letting the Lord work in you. All right. Don't be trying to use Deborah as your example. Deborah is an example of a woman leading her husband. Okay. And so um, when we see stuff like this, people, we have to remember to find the examples in the word of God, find the things that are taking place, the things that we kind of ponder a little bit, find it in the word of God. All right. So uh, the other thing is that when we look at uh, this whole thing uh, taking place when you see this whole homosexuality stuff jumping off. Like I mentioned before, you know, uh, when Obama was in office, that was those eight years, that that was a demonic strategy to really push and open the door up for this whole LGBT, transgender, men going into women's restrooms, boys wrestling, uh, uh, girls wrestling on a boys wrestling team, uh, boys running in, uh, running on female track team sports events and just dusting all the girls and everything. Obama was the catalyst for that. And now we see what is going to come about, you know, even next month, the Lord willing, is this Gay Pride Month. All right. And I'm going to shift it, you know, politically a little bit. He came out of the Democratic Party, okay? And now, guess what the Democratic Party is pushing forth now, all right? The mayor from South Bend, Indiana. And I'm from originally from South Bend. So um, go back there every so often. But it is amazing. I just, I, and I still don't understand how, you know, South Bend, Chicago, these different cities or whatever, they have multitudes of churches in them. And if you do a poll by 80, 85 percent of people will say they Christians. But yet, how in the world, if all these people are Christians, all these people, all these churches are in these cities, how in the world does a openly practicing lesbian or homosexual 
get elected into office with all these churches. Okay. It's, it's kind of it's mind boggling because it's like what's being taught or how serious do people take the word of God? See what the devil is doing is strategically putting people in political offices, trying to get them in political offices and he use, using the vehicle of the media to do it because the media, which I call the false prophets, paint a false narrative, create a false narrative and a false picture of a, a, a particular movement that makes up, you know, I'm talking about the LGBT movement that makes up about like what 5% of the, uh, the population in America, but it has the highest HIV rate in America makes up 5% of the uh, population and, and, and is being promoted and exalted above everything. And so this guy is, you know, uh, I believe his name is, is Pete, whatever the, the mayor, uh, he's, he's openly saying he's gay, openly practicing, you know, he's married to a man or whatever. Uh, we're actually, it's not even marriage. It's, it's nothing but lust. Okay. It's not love. It's lust. And so, uh, and then they went to like a, 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 a Bible study, I guess, of another, uh, uh, former politician and went in there. And so when they can go in there like that, they're, they're flaunting and saying, Hey, you can't say nothing about us. You sit in the Bible study. I can tell you one thing. I guarantee what was not taught in that Bible study was Roman chapter one. And that's what's happening is because now the wickedness of men are able to strut about when the vileness of men is exalted. They're boldly going into different places, Bible studies and everything, because they know the truth is not going to be taught. They know their lifestyle is not going to be confronted. They know the sin is not going to be talked about. And so uh, what this Democratic Party is doing, even with Joe Biden, you know, he's one. He served under Obama and was right there when Obama was signing all these gay pride, June being gay pride month and everything. See, people of God pay attention, pay attention because it's coming back around again, especially in uh, 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 in the year 2020. Now, some people believe that, you know, all these, you know, presidents are selected. I, for one, I don't, you know, really believe that. Um but we're seeing, you know, what's getting ready to come up. And I'm wondering if the church is going to fall for it again, because African-Americans have been brainwashed to just vote all Democrat, you know. But I just wanted to share that because what the enemy is doing is strategically trying to place people in the judicial system, in government positions, Congress positions, you know, uh, high ranking seats in, in cities and territories that are sons and daughters of Bilal because he wants America to reflect and be and mimic, ju uh, become just like Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, I know America, we we definitely have, you know, our, our the, the, the issues in this country, the immorality, the idolatry turned away from God. We see all that. But one of those things that you will find, you know, when it comes to this lifestyle is that when this is exalted and being put on a pedestal of, uh, you know, or perversion, it is a sign that that culture or that nation is about to be destroyed. All right. It is a sign. And so when somebody is, if somebody were to be an openly gay homosexual person and get put in the white house, it's over. Okay. And in fact, this is exactly what the devil is using to fight against the church. Look at all the conflict that's being created because of ministers did not take a stand. And now they got homosexuals, you know, all up in the choir stand and, and all up on the deacon board and all on the praise team and lesbians and everything, you know, when being ordained as, as, as pastors and bishops and stuff. And see now when that, when, when that stuff happens, when those tears are allowed in that ministry, and there's no, you know, uh, repentance and no sitting people are down and stuff. Then that church has 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 lost its stand. As a matter of fact, I I, I'm, I I will dare to say that 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 lampstand that 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 fire has removed them from that church. It's, it becomes a Ichabod. Okay, the glory has departed from it. All right, they can have all the clanging and banging services all they want to say all Christian terminology, but the spirit of God is not going to be in there. Okay. So we wanted to, I wanted to, uh, to share that, just kind of make you aware of some of the things um, uh, taking place that we want to make sure that we are crying aloud and sparing not. You know, the Bible says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them, expose them. OK, so I just wanted to share that um, one of the things I want to continue on with this whole thing of covetousness Um is that with covetousness, 
we understand that, you know, it's, covetousness is being greedy. All right. Desire more than what you have, not being content, but you want more. And that's what I the, the, back to the whole thing with the, with, with women, you know, even men do the same thing is instead of embracing your role as a father, as a husband, as a uh, as a uh, as a wife or as a homemaker, they desire the limelight. They desire another position. They desire more than what God is ordained and called for us to be. Now I know the Bible says if anyone desires to be a bishop, that's a good that's a that's a good thing. Okay, I'm not saying you know uh, we're not desire you know being service of the Lord in 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 ministries as as men. All right. But what I'm saying is that when you desire something to where you're willing to sacrifice your own family and your own children because you want something for yourself more. All right. That's called covetousness. That's being greedy. Excuse me. When women uh, desire to be on the forefront, desire to be, you know, uh, God's leading lady that that, 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 that Jake's, you know, uh, uh, utilize in this book and stuff and, and, and trying to pull women forward and everything desiring that that's, that's covetousness because you're desiring a position. That's what Satan does. This whole thing is pattern. Covetousness is pattern after the devil. He was the first one that was covetous because he wanted to ascend, uh, have his throne ascend uh, uh, on the stars uh, uh, above the throne of God. He desired another position outside of what God assigned for him to do. Okay. Desiring positions of power. Uh, now, uh, throughout the Bible, you will see like even, especially even in the old Testament, a lot of Kings did this stuff. A lot of Kings were always desired to remain on the throne. So what they would do is because of covetousness, they would, try to destroy, you know, their own lineage to keep them from occupying the throne. They would not want the heir of the throne to occupy their throne. Jesus Christ faced this. You know, Herod did this when he found out that Jesus Christ was born and it says he'll be king of king, Lord of lords. He knows he's going to prince of the Jews and everything. Herod became raged and he desired to go and destroy all the little boys because he wanted to catch the Messiah. He did not want any, he did not want anyone to come after his throne or to dethrone him. I mean, he went even after his own family, you know, uh, from a historical perspective, he went after his own family. So uh, covetousness and, and, and greed will cause people to want to, to, to destroy someone else, discredit someone else because they want their position and also try to uh, uh, take what belongs to another person. All right. Or take advantage of a person in order for their own self to uh, to excel or to move forward or be exalted, okay? Now, we look at this even with businesses and companies. They can be covetous, all right? Because they will withhold the benefits that belongs to a person because that company can benefit, you know, financially, you know, uh, from it, all right? And so one of the things you want to always, you know, pray is for the hands of the wicked to be broken, any covetous and greedy hands that's been trying to constrict, limit, or lock things up that belongs to you, and oftentimes is 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 done out of out of uh, out of a rebellion and witchcraft. But pray for the for the for the arm of the Lord to be released, the sword of the Lord to be released, and break and cut off those wicked hands. All right. Now I'm gonna tell you some people of God. All through the Bible, God does bless His people. He blesses His children with long. When we look at Psalms 91. No sickness will come near your tent nor your dwelling place. With long life, the Lord will satisfy you, show you his salvation. He will give his angels charge over you to protect you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Okay, though a thousand might fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, it would not come near you. There are blessings from God that comes upon his people as we do things God's way, as we uh, walk in his order, as our household is in his order. Listen, your household will be blessed. That's why I love Zechariah, I believe it's two and five, and it says, Lord, let a wall of fire be around about us, because Israel did not have a wall like, you know, like other nations and cities at that time. He said, let, your, let a wall of fire be around us and let your glory be in our midst. And that's one of the things, people of God, you want to definitely hit in prayer. Father, 
Father God, put your wall of fire around me and my family, around my children. Let your glory be in our midst. But even as we say that, people, God, we also got to create that atmosphere, you know, open and make an atmosphere conducive for the Holy Spirit. That's through praise and worship, you know, continual prayer, sharing the word of God, reading the word of God and releasing worship even in our house. So when we do those things, uh, we welcome the spirit of God. All right. That's how miracles, healings, deliverances can take place. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, you know, revelation of Jesus Christ. And he begins to visit you even in your dreams and, and everything. And the Lord begins to, 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 to minister to your heart because we welcome his presence and we, 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 we create an atmosphere for his presence and for his spirit. Amen. OK, so we don't want to get involved in covetousness, people. And I wanted to share some scriptures, you know, that dealing with covetousness and dealing with this issue of greed. Uh, please look at that first video. Covetousness, is, I believe it's part one uh, that I uh, try to highlight on some things. But. Um, we got to understand that, you know, we got the covetousness is one of the works of the flesh. All right. In the Bible, I believe in Colossians chapter uh, two or, or chapter three, chapter three, when it says covetousness, which is idolatry. All right. Because you cannot serve God and mammon people. And that's where this whole thing is coming down to what we're seeing in certain ministries, we're seeing in certain people's lives. It's because of the love of money. As a matter of fact, because of the cares and the riches of this world, excuse me, through covetousness, the word of God is choked out of people. And that's what happens when people are covered. This, they don't want to hear the full counsel of God. OK, they will harden their hearts to receive in correction from the word of God, especially when you try to share things out the word of God with them. They harden their hearts. They don't want to hear it because their hearts are filled with covetousness and greed. All right. Now, I want to uh, jump on something real quick and that is um when we look at uh who was it the book of matthew okay i want to show you something well i want to show you something in the book of luke i'm sorry book of luke chapter 12 we want to look at this parable of the uh, of the of the parable of the rich fool all right uh one of the things we want to notice people is that when you see people that are or, or ministers that are that that are covetous they will produce people that are covetous all right and to be covetous or to order serve first serve money is antichrist to the core people that refuse the truth because of desiring this world will harbor a antichrist spirit and follow any doctrine that fulfills their desires. That's where you get the itchy ears. Okay, they heap upon themselves uh, ministers with with it with itchy ears. Why? Because they want to hear whatever is going to cater to their own lusts and their own covetous desires. And so when all you're getting is the bless me club, your breakthrough, your your destiny, your this, your that, everything is about you. When you're hearing that, that's usually speaking, uh, that's usually coming out of the mouth of someone that is covetous because it's all about you. It's never about repenting. It's never about turning away from your sins and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and, be, and, be, and start reflecting Jesus Christ and, and modeling your heart after Jesus Christ. It's always about you. All right. It's always about what you can gain, what you can get. And they try, they try to equate godliness with gain. All right. And so that's when you start recognizing that how things are, it comes out of a mouth of, 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 of someone that is covetous because it's all about material gain. Never about, you know, repentance, never about living holy, living righteous. And a lot of times people want to quote that scripture. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways and repent, they will allow here from heaven to heal the land. But yet the, the, the issue is what is the ministry's repenting of? What sins do they know to turn away from? See, when Jesus Christ used the apostle John to write those letters to the uh, churches in Revelation, he showed them specifically what they needed to turn from. See, oftentimes some scriptures, scriptures are being quoted, but yet, you know, ministries across the land, every time you see, you know, murders and you see uh, uh, all the abortions and everything, you see the, you know, all this perversion, everything, all of a sudden you hear people quote that scripture, if my people will call up on my name, well, what do they repent of? 
They don't know what to repent of because nobody's speaking out against the things that they need to repent of. People are too afraid to speak out against idolatry, against the sexual morality, against the greed, the covetousness, against the, you know, the behind the uh, scene, the behind the closed doors, uh, pastoral deeds uh, or pastoral uh, um, uh honorariums that are being done and, and conversations being done behind secret, you know, and closed doors, you know, deals being done out in the streets by the saints of God and stuff or people that's claiming Christians. And it, it, it's amazing. They don't know what to repent of because nobody's speaking out. Nobody's calling it out. And so they just quote a scripture and they try to use that scripture as a cliche almost. Okay. But that scripture was in, it was dealing with, you know, that nation, uh, I believe it was Israel at the time they had turned to idolatry. They had went after other nations, followed their gods, followed their practices and started embracing them and bringing it into their midst. And that's why that scripture, I believe I, I, if I'm, if I'm trying to remember, I believe that's what, why that scripture was written. Okay. Because they were going into, I, they kept getting involved in idolatry. And so when we're quoting these scriptures, let's be specific about what the churches, you know, or the people of God need to repent of. Because if the alarm is not sounded, they have no idea what to repent of. If you see the sword coming and we don't sound the alarm, then that blood becomes up on that watchman's hands. All right. So anyway, um, back to this whole thing with covetousness and, and stuff. And, and by the way, this whole thing with Kanye West, I think I touched on a little bit. But uh, uh, the Kardashian, Kim Kardashian, whatever, she's the one, you know, spearheading that whole thing. That's a Jezebel. All right. And we see, you know, that whole family. Anytime somebody gets hooked up with them girls in that family, they career, NBA career gets thrown out of whack. They they just plummet down. OK, sometimes. And it's a, it's a shame that some of these women are here getting pregnant so they can keep a hold on these men. And, you know, I'm, 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 uh, just a side on, I looked on the, the, the news the other day. And another thing that I want to address is these women, you know, having babies, but they are leaving their babies with these live in boyfriends that ain't even the biological father of these children. And he ends up molesting them or killing them and all this other stuff. Because when the heads is broken, the servant bites parents, you got to cover your children. Single mothers, you need to protect your babies. You can't just hand them over to anybody just because you're looking for love. You're willing to jeopardize your own child's life and not even pay attention to the warning signs because you're too busy hooking up with Junebug. And he living in he living in your house, which is which is you know fornication and sin in the first place. But any man that does that has to that wants to move in with a woman okay that's not right that's not right at all that does not show a good quality you know a man that wants to be a leader you know he wants to he wants everything in the lady's name he can't he don't want to get nothing in his name he's that that dude is shady he's shysty and he's got some up his sleeve people all right quit letting these boys move in with you these are not men these are boys Wanting to live up on a woman, you know, and 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 and, and live with her. Oh, I can't get a job. Can you help a brother out? No, you help yourself out. Go down to that homeless shelter and and and, and, and repent and 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 get yourself right right with the Lord, and learn how to be a man. You know, quit 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 letting these men mooch off of you. My goodness, it, it it's ridiculous. And you see the same old song over and over again. Some innocent child then got violated, molested, or even murdered because the mother was too caught up in her little boyfriend, boo, and gave her child over to him. Now, if there's somebody that you know, they, they, they can repent and you know the Lord can forgive them, but pay attention to the signs, people. Pay attention. Quit playing the fool. All right? So anyway... My goodness, excuse me. Uh, Luke chapter 12. <laughs> We're going to look at this. And uh, 12, 13, it says, Then um, put my stuff over there. one from the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to me, him, Man, who made me a judge or arbitrate over you? And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. 
for one's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. And this is where, you know, I really wanted to hit on is that one's life does not consist of the things that he possesses because you can't take it with you. You know, you can have all the money in the world and some kind of affliction or sickness, disease or terminal illness strikes a person body. They can't, it can't save them. All right. The money, you can't save them. You can't take it with you. And so Jesus Christ is trying to get people to understand the eternal perspective. All right. That's why he warns us and the word of God warns us in Colossians chapter three. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek those things above where Christ Jesus is seated and not the things of the earth. All right. And he says, then he spoke a parable to them saying the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself saying, what should I do since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, so you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, fool. See, people try to. You know, they want the image of God, the father and Jesus Christ to reflect, you know, Hollywood Jesus or reflect the way the world wants Jesus to be all just nice. Uh, the little baby Jesus and just want him to never be offensive and anything. He never judges. He never does anything. He just loves and just and just appreciates you and just wants the, the best life. That's one thing I just can't stand. You know, hearing people say, oh, that's God, that's not God's best for your life. no. The word of God says what God wants for your life. Live holy. This is your sanctification that you abstain from fornication. Be ye holy for I am holy. That's what God calls us to be. Okay, all this terminology, God's best. And that's not God's best for your life. No, it's either sin or you're living holy. That's, the, that, that's it. All right. And so, uh, and if you're living in sin, repent. You know, many of us stumble and fall in certain areas of our lives, confess it before the Lord. The Bible says that if we confess our sins before him. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But you got to confess and acknowledge it first. All right. So uh, but it says God said to him, fool. And, you know, Jesus Christ, father, were always strong about correcting people. This night, your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. That is a powerful statement that Jesus Christ made. Everything that Jesus Christ says is powerful, full of authority and full of the kingdom. And he says, so is he who lays up for himself treasures, treasures, you know, lay up for himself, you know, the treasures on this earth for himself. And so this is what covers does. It causes a person not to reflect on eternity, not to reflect on the coming of Jesus Christ. This is the reason why you don't hear that preacher taught nowadays, because the Bible says that if we have this hope, he who has this hope purifies himself, even as he is pure, that when Christ appears, we shall be just like him. And we shall not, you know, we won't, we won't be fearful of anything, but the world will see us as he is. OK, in Colossians chapter, I believe that's in Colossians chapter two. So when we see this stuff, people we, uh, cover this person, they always get caught up on earthly possessions, earthly accolades. They never focus on the eternal perspective or becoming rich in the kingdom of God. How do you become rich in the kingdom of God? Rich in the worship, rich in the word of God, you know, uh, being filled with the wisdom of God, you know, sowing into the kingdom, uh, you know, giving to the poor. Uh, when we see that man in the book of Acts, I believe it's Cornelius, how he was uh, highly esteemed by God. Why? Because he gave to the poor. When you look at uh, Dorcas, how she always, you know, took care of the poor, how she she was very honored, you know, by the people in the community because she constantly helped the poor out. OK. And so this is how you're rich in the kingdom of God, by giving things to the kingdom of God, support ministries that are doing things by the word of God and teach it by the word of God. All right. So we, we, we see that. But unfortunately, what's happened is you got pastors that want to wear, you know, thirty five hundred dollar pair of shoes uh, uh, while they're uh 
uh, uh, preaching on a pulpit to try to show that they can floss, they can they can have the the, the high class, high end things uh, just like the world. Look here, I'm gonna tell you something right now. If a man you know works hard, you know makes wise investments and everything, and and has a you know wealthy life, even the Bible you know uh, talks about you know the rich, you know uh, making sure that you 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 get the point, don't let your riches you know take hold of you. But if a man is able to provide for his family and everything, buy them nice things, you know, that, that that's no problem. You know, I have nothing to do with, with how a man, you know, uh, uh, who is, is faithful and labors and goes to work for his family is taking care of. I mean, these NBA athletes, many of them, some of them are Christians, NFL athletes, some of them are Christians, okay? Well to do, well off and everything can take care of their family. But I'm saying that when it comes to, you know, standing up in front of a pool pit, what is the purpose of having $3,500 pair of shoes on? What purpose does that serve? All right. That, that don't let, I mean, you, you just can't, it just doesn't, it just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't seem right. It doesn't look right. All right. Even the apostle Paul warned and said, Hey, if you, if you see that you, you know, you're eating pork, but you see someone that is weaker, you know, in the faith or whatever, a brother in the Lord that takes offense to it. He says, don't eat the food then don't eat the pork. I'd rather for you to have peace with your brother, all right? And so that's the same thing. When people, when these, sometimes, sometimes some of these leaders, they get so caught up in the in the who they know and what celebrity comes to their church and what celebrity they shake hands with and who they hanging around with, all the celebrities that they know who is all in sin anyway, but who they can connect and hang around with. So they try to floss just like them and saying, it's okay, I can, I can get this, I can get that, but it, it doesn't look right. OK, because you don't want to what you're doing to cause people to stumble and think that, OK, if I do what he's doing, I will get from God what he got, because now they're looking to serve God for what God can do and not for who God is. And that way, if they and if they're doing that, it's because it's being projected from the pulpit. And when they're doing stuff like that, they never come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. They never come to learn of Jesus Christ, which means denying themselves that Christ, who is their hope of glory, can be exalted through their lives. And they can't do that because the minister up in front of them is flossing, bawling, showing all the stuff that he got. And they start thinking that God will do that same thing for me and see this is amazing this is something that is uh, so terrible people is that when ministers or, or people like this you know the bible even the even apostle paul warned i believe it's in first corinthians chapter five he says don't keep company with a covetous person he said but put them out of the church don't even eat with them okay don't even eat with them because they're covetous they're they're covetous which is idolatry they're idol worshipers they're worshiping man they're worshiping things they're going after things. And that's why the word of God says the love of the, of money, the love of money is the root of all evil. All right. Now, I want to share this with you in uh, Matthew chapter seven. One of the things that we'll see, you know, Jesus Christ said seven, verse uh, 15, he says, beware, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, meaning they come to you you know, uh, looking nice. They come to you. They have the Christian terminology down and everything, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Now, when you look at that word ravenous and even in the Greek, one of the, one of the, uh, the terms that defines ravenous is greed, greed. Okay. Greed. So it shows that ravenous wolves we're people of greed, greedy people. He says, beware of false prophets me, within false the prophet. local assembly or they present themselves as Christians. You know, he says, beware of them because all the time false prophets, they always, always teach or prophesy for the sake of gain, for the sake of being 
being noticed for the sake of, of, of wanting to be the, the, the top person on the, on the, on the, uh, the, the, the hierarchy or whatever, want to be acknowledged all through our social media, want to be known all through our social media land, Instagram, Twitter, you know, Facebook, whatever, MySpace back in the day and, uh, YouTube and everything. That's what false prophets do. They always do things for a gain. They do things to take advantage of people. They do things to, to, uh, 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 with, uh, exploit people. They do things for their own selfish ambition, for their own gain, but they know Christian terminology. They know how to use key words and key terms that will hook those silly women, that will hook those foolish men in that have itchy ears. All right? They present themselves one way, but it's all for their own selfish gain. That's the reason why they don't take a stand when it comes to holiness. They don't take a stand when it comes to sin. Matter of fact, they encourage people. They encourage Christians that it's okay for them to partner with the world to do some record deal, to do some album. It's okay for them to share their pool pits with, with, with people that are in idolatry and Greek fraternities or sororities, uh, with people that are in Hollywood. You got, you know, uh, Common, you know, sharing the stage with T.D. Jakes. You got... Uh, Kanye West being in people's pool, you know, being in people's churches and performing and got his own church, all his own false church and everything. The reason why that's done because of covetousness, because people have pushed these people forth and they want to share the stage because they want to be known as a celebrity, even in Christian dome. All right. Now, the next one I want to look at is uh, Colossians chapter three. And I want to share it to show this. Uh, it says in chapter three, verse four, when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him. Therefore, put to death. Therefore, put to death. It says, therefore, put to death, meaning don't have no part of it. Your old man, your old nature. Therefore, put to death. Your members, which are on the earth, fornication. You should never be having sex before marriage. Uncleanness. There's living in sexual morality. You know, lasciviousness, lewdness, and especially in the summertime. I mean, this this scantily clothed women and men, you know, they're getting on social media, showing their chest and showing they, they're trying to show their muscles off to try to uh, seduce all the women and everything. And these women showing, you know, cleavage and, and, and skirts so small, it look like just a belt is on them and, and, and all this stuff. And I'm talking about people within it, within churches doing this stuff. That's uncleanness. Uh, 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 passions, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. So he says, therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Who are the sons of disobedience? Those that are covetous. But yet they occupy positions in ministries. They occupy positions in in uh, 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 in companies and organizations and families because of greed and covetousness. They are willing to maneuver and do whatever they need to do to become the top person, you know, or the top dog, whatever the, the cliche, the top dog in, in 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 that particular sphere of influence. They want to be the one in charge. They want to be. And, I, and I've seen it personally where people try to uh, backstab you, go behind your back because they want your position. OK, when it comes to, you know, occupying a, a place in the, in, in the workforce, they're covetous, they're greedy, they want things their way. And so they're willing to do whatever they can to get ahead of you, slander, accuse you, lie on you backbites you, backstab you and everything because they desire what you have. See, Simon the sorcerer, the witch, the the will, the, uh, the 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 Satanist or whatever, he did the same thing. Simon the sorcerer did the same thing. He thought that he could get the, the gift of the Holy Spirit by purchasing it. Why? Because even though he believed on Jesus Christ and was baptized, covetousness was in his heart. And this is the thing we got to be careful of people of God. You know, as, as, especially with those that are sharing things on social media, keep a humble heart. 
Quit looking for likes. Quit looking for the support of social those in social media land. Amen. You're not going to get, you know, rewards for how in heaven or for how many subscribers you got to your YouTube channel or how many likes you got on Facebook. No. You 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 receive, a, you know, rewards for what you done, you doing the will of the Father. All right, raising your family in righteousness, teaching your children the things of God, living as a godly man, a representation of Jesus Christ, you know, uh, uh, as representing, excuse me, representing the kingdom of God in the earth. Wives the same way. Okay. And so we want to make sure that we, we, we do things, we sharing things out the word of God that is accurate, keeping, keeping uh, things in biblical context and sharing the truth and being bold about it in love. Which means that you, you we we care for the souls. Let's look here. You know, I hit on this whole LGBT agenda because I see one thing is that you know uh, those in that lifestyle, that so called you know hooked up with their partners, they're leading them to hell. And so it is no way you can say that somebody loves somebody and you purposely leading them to hell. And so as a church, as a body of Christ, we have got to tell people the truth that Jesus Christ, I don't care what your lifestyle is. You come to the Lord Jesus Christ, whether you in that LGBT lifestyle or whatever, transgender, having sexual identity issues, you come to Jesus Christ and the Lord can deliver you and he will deliver you when you come to him repenting with a sincere heart. All right. And so when we as we're looking at this whole thing with covetousness, people. These that that the, that the apostles are warning about, that Jesus Christ even warned about, are those that are they are they they will tear things apart in order to get what they want. Whenever you look at these false prophets, especially ones that Jesus Christ is talking about, beware of false prophets. And you look at how false prophets always try to do things for gain. Ministers that try to do things for gain. Look at Balaam and Balak. All right, they wanted to do things for gain. They want no matter what. Okay, put the women in front of the children of Israel. That'll get them out of the will of God. That way you can curse them and everything. But they were doing it for gain, monetary gain. Judas is scary. What did he do for Jesus to, in order to uh, sell Jesus Christ out? He sold them out for silver. Okay, material possessions, something that is temporary. He completely lost sight of. Of, of the eternal perspective and was right in the midst of the son of the living God. Didn't even take time to repent, just took his own life. All right. So when we see this stuff, people, we have to remember that Jesus Christ warns, watch the fruit of these false prophets. Watch the fruit of these, you know, uh, you know, certain ministries when they sit up there and you got, like I said before in the previous video, you got to give a record of all your tithing and everything. And you better tithe this much if you're going to be a member here and all this stuff. And, you know, hey, we're going to raise a building fund. You know, we've been raising a building fund for the last 25 years and it ain't been one brick. It ain't even been, it ain't even been a, 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 a hole dug in by, uh, by a shovel even to start the building. 25 years still building still ain't up, but you've been raising building fund for the last 25 years. People of God pay attention to covetousness. Pay attention to greed. Because of covetousness, people won't teach the truth. All right? They will hold back because of our honorarium they're about to get because they done made a covenant, they done made a deal behind closed doors, you know, with the uh, host minister of a particular event or, uh, excuse me, of a particular uh, conference event. Because of covetousness. Okay, and look and look what the Apostle Paul says in, in uh First Thessalonians chapter two. All right. And he says, For our exhortation did not come from chapter two, verse three, our exhortation did not come from error or uncleanness, nor was it in deceit. But as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, even so we speak not as pleasing men, but God who tests our hearts. In other words, they were not coming to preach and teach to see who are like them, trying to please men. See, when people try to please men, you water down the word of God. When you try to please and try to please the world and try to please celebrities and stuff, you start conforming to what they want, <clears throat> rather what God tells us to stand for. And so you try to please men. He said, we did not try to please men. 
That's why Jesus Christ says the world will hate you because it hated me first. The world loves its own, but also recognizes the world will also turn its back on its own as well. But it says, but God who tests our hearts for neither at any time that we use flattering words, as you know, nor a cloak for covetousness. God is our witness, nor do we seek glory from men, either from you or from others when we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. In other words, what he's saying, look here, we were not requiring anything from you. We were not seeking glory from men. We were not seeking your praise and everything. We came to do the will of God by preaching and teaching the unadulterated truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what our assignment is. All right. We did not come to take advantage of you. We did not try to come and use, you know, the revelation that God has given us, whatever, as a way to make merchandise of you or to make uh, uh, to or, or to be a cloak of covetousness. Beware, people of God, that or of people that want to make merchandise of you. When you see all these book tours, you see things like, you know, with uh, Jake's, I've seen him doing, you know, when they got these new books, all of a sudden they got to make a, you know, a, a, a um, they got to schedule events, you know, to help promote their book, uh, you know, all across the nation. Every ministry that wants to be like Jake's ministry or every ministry that wants to be like the, the big mega church ministry that they're connected to, you know, that that big time bishop or that big time pastor or whatever is going to make his rounds. So all the smaller ministries that want to be like his and, and, and to help promote his new book or his new album, whatever. OK, they got to make their rounds. You know, they're not going to address sin. They're not going to challenge people to repent. They're making their rounds because they want their books to sell. All right. They want their they want their material to sell. So they got to make their rounds and get the people hyped up and everything. So when people are God, this is how when people can make merchandise of you. Now, look, let me tell you something. I'm not against, you know, reading books from from certain ministers. You know, I've read books from Lester Sumrall, Smith Wigglesworth. You know, uh, I, I like, you know, uh, Frank and Ida Mae Hammond's books, Pyrrhus in the Parlor. You know, certain books that I that I've gained understanding from people that uh, that that write on the apostolic, on the prophetic, on the gifts of the spirit, on spiritual warfare and deliverance. You know, you can gain some understanding from people's personal uh, accounts and testimonies uh, that are based out of the word of God. That is the key thing. It must be based out of the word of God. But the only way you're going to know that is by you knowing the word of God yourself, having the Holy Spirit on the inside. Of you. That's why the Bible says test everything, but hold on to the truth. OK, and test every spirit and see if it be of God. All right. It doesn't say try the spirit by the spirit. It doesn't say that. That's for people that twist the word of God. It says, try every spirit and see if it be of God. Okay. So, uh, but yes, be careful of those that want to make merchandise of you. All right. They want you to get their prayer shawls. They want you to get, you know, uh, uh, this book and, and this material and everything. And all their conferences cost like $1,500 or $1,000 per seat and everything. They're making merchandise of you. And women, I encourage you, stop going to every other prophetic conference. You're going to get yourself confused. You're going to get yourself, you become double-minded. Men, same thing. Stop ripping and running to every single conference you see under some this men's conference, that conference over here, that conference over here. This is the reason why so many people are walking around double-minded and are spiritual schizophrenics because they done went to her. This word, that word, that word, and now you don't even know the true word of God because you allow too many voices to speak into your ears because people are making merchandise of you. They're exploiting you. They're using you for their own gain. All right. And so I wanted to kind of hit on this whole thing of, of covetousness, people, because this is something that is causing ministries not to teach the truth because of covetousness, because they lust for the things of this world. They lust for the desire of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and it's choking the word of God out of them. And they have to water down their messages because they don't want to offend anybody because of covetousness. People will not teach the truth. They will, they will shy away from certain scriptures because they have selfish ambition. They want to be on top. They want to lead. They want the spotlight. They want to yoke up with secular artists. They want to be connected with Hollywood artists. 
They want all the accolades of men and are willing to do whatever it takes to get that, including if it means exploiting and taking advantage of you, making merchandise of you, taking advantage of the household of silly women. All right. That's what covetous does. That's the reason why you see so many watered down messages and so many ministries have turned into Barnes and Bailey circus or turned into the universal soul circus in these predominantly black churches because they are catering to the world because they know if they get more people, they can get more money. Mammon and more mammon produces more people because that money will 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 paint a uh excellent you know bring a new building bring new uh cosmetology you know co cosmetic excuse me cosmetic uh, uh uh looks to that particular ministry it looks it looks beautiful it looks glorious and everything else but inside it can be filled with dead man's bones because the word is being watered down that's the reason why that's what we're seeing nowadays especially out of a lot of young ministers. They want to be liked by everybody. They want to be liked by, you know, the community. They want to be liked by uh, 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 the world. And they want that platform. They, they're leading that church because they want a platform. And that's the reason why they tell you stuff like, don't judge, don't, don't you talk about this, don't you talk about this. The church people are so mean, Christians are so mean and everything. And I hear that cliche all the time. And what it is is that what they're basically saying is that, they don't want the church to be the church. They don't want Christians to be Christians like Christians were in the Bible because true Christians are going to stand up for what the word of God says and are going to confront sin and they're going to confront, you know, deception that has crept into churches and ministries. And when you do that, you look at it as being mean or they call you religious and everything. And, uh, you know, that's one of the one things that the Pharisees did is they, 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 they attack Christ because of his stance. You know, the Pharisees like positions. They like being the ones that everybody ran to. They were greedy. They were covetous. You know, uh, even at, at times, Jesus Christ's disciples kind of showed their heart. Jesus, you know, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom uh, who will sit at your right hand. Jesus Christ, even the, one of the disciples mothers came to Jesus and said, Jesus, uh, uh, Please allow my son to sit with you, you know, in your kingdom. And Jesus looks at him and says, can you drink the cup that I'm about to drink? Can you do those? Can you do what I'm getting ready to go through? You know, and so what, what covetous would, would do is cause people to seek and desire position, but they don't want to sacrifice. They don't want to give up anything. They don't want to deny themselves. They just want to ease on in and occupy that position. OK, and be over people, their desire is to be the one in charge and be over people, okay? So do not let yourself to be taken advantage of or be made merchandise of people, especially women. Don't let yourself be taken advantage of, all right? Seek the Lord about where to go, what ministry to be a part of, and stop you know, being conference hoppers. All right. And men, you know, definitely, you know, you want to be around, you know, other God fearing men and, and, and not be, you know, have your head, you know, being pulled this direction and that direction and, and being taken advantage of to where you, you forget and leave your own responsibilities of your home. There's a show on, uh, on Netflix, by the way, this br brings my, to my attention. It's called, uh, uh, aiming the arrows. All right. And it's a Christian film and it's it, and it's and it basically talks about, you know, a man and a woman that were raising a family, you know, and uh, but the husband was always working, provided a beautiful home for his household. But his children ended up growing up right before his eyes and he could not even recognize it because he was at work all the time and a wife was carrying the load of raising the children at home. OK, men, we have got to be balanced. It's OK to say no. All right. Trust the Lord to provide for you. OK. And don't let the job or don't let other things pull you away from spending time with your own children, spending time with your wife, ministering to them, teaching them, training them. I don't care what's going on out in the community. Your home is priority. OK. You should be attending your children's events at school. You need to be attending and be a, be a part of these different uh, parent teachers conferences. Men, fathers, you need to be there. 
You need to be actively engaged in your child's education. And even if they're playing sports, no matter what is fathers, you need to be there and you need to make a point to be there. That means you got to tell some people no. There's times where I have to tell, you know, uh, in times past where I've had to tell people, no, I'm not planning this event on a weekend because uh, uh, my child has this going on. And I'm going to be there. Plus, I like my weekends, you know, <laughs> to myself anyway. And with my, being with my family, I love being around my family and stuff. So I tell them no, you know, and sometimes when people are single, they don't have those responsibilities. So they think that everybody, everything, you know, when you're single, you think everything revolves around that single lifestyle. Well, it doesn't. OK, when people are married or people have children, their children is your top priority. All right. The Bible says that children are a blessing from the Lord. Happy is a man whose quiver is full of them. He is like the arrows. They, they are like the arrows in a man's hand, in, in, in the soldier's hand. OK. And so I want to encourage you to definitely watch that movie. All right. It's a great movie about redemption, forgiveness. And, and that family ends up, you know, I ain't going to tell you the whole story, but you got to watch it yourself. But anyway, people of God, when you take a stand, see, they always trying to say, well, church folk are so mean. They're so brutal and everything. No, what it is, is that some people, they don't want their, their sin being confronted. That's what it that's what it comes down to. And see, when you start speaking up and try to and start shutting the mouth of these false teachers because you start showing things in the word of God that go against what they're doing, they want to call you mean. They want to call you judgmental. You know, look here, people of God, when you're walking in that apostolic, you know, uh, authority uh, in, in, in the Lord Jesus Christ, that the Lord has given the church that apostolic authority, which means the sent ones, which means one that is sent to pioneer work for the kingdom of God in the earth, in your particular sphere of influence, when you're walking in that, you can expect, you know, those who are, who are compromising to resist you to try to label you certain ways to try to call you religious to try to call you you know mean and and in and, and, uh, uh, and hate field and and homophobic you can expect that why because they have no standard you know they don't want the full counsel of God and so they don't want you to have a standard that's what the devil wants you to do is to water down the word of God because if you water when you water things down it's no longer the gospel okay well, you don't, well, you can't preach the death, resurrection of Jesus Christ and living holy, living righteous and stand for what the word of God stands for and hate what God hates. Well, you can't do that anymore. Then you're not speaking the word of God. You're speaking what you wanted to say. Okay. And God, the Bible says God never changes. His word is forever settled in the heavens. All right. And his word will fulfill that which for which he has sent it. To accomplish okay and so i see that cliche all the time and that just that stuff just it, it just bothers me because i see what it what people are trying to be is just that little seeker friendly uh a uh, 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 person with the title of christian and i say they have the title of christian because they want to conform to the ways of this world and not to the kingdom of god when someone you know, wants to go along with the whole thing. Well, you know, church, we, we're supposed to be the hospital. No, you're not. The church is not a hospital. I'll say it again. The church is not a hospital. The church is where the saints of God get charged and activated to advance the kingdom of God in their sphere of influence. That's why he said he put some of the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers and everything. That's why when you read, I believe it's in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, when it talks about the, uh, I believe it's the, that's the chapter when it talks about the, like the gifts of the spirit. And it says if any, if there is an unbeliever, if there is an unbeliever. So if it says if, that means that that, that that church was designed for believers. The church is for Christians. It's for believers. That's where Christians gather to worship God together amongst the brethren. That's why when the apostles begin to write to the, the letters to the churches, they were writing to Christians and Christians in those churches. All right. They were not supposed to be, they were not unbelievers in those churches. They were writing directly to Christians and how Christians are supposed to live. Now, if a unbeliever comes in, as I, and, I'm, and I'm going back to when it talks about the spirit of uh, uh, the gift of prophecy and how it's supposed to function and operate, he said, if there's an unbeliever that comes in the midst of you, 
He will glorify God because of you giving that prophetic word, which edifies the church. He will glorify God because he hears and understands, you know, what you're saying. That's when it talks about, you know, if there's tongues to definitely, you know, have an interpreter uh, for tongues. When you're addressing people, you're addressing the entire congregation, have that interpreter there. OK, so anyway. Don't, you know, uh, uh, water down because of people want to people calling you mean and stuff. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you this because we have to be balanced. Make sure that what you're saying is, is in the word of God. Don't go off of your own, you know, understanding, whatever. It has to be line up on line, precept upon precept. It has to be in context, people. Okay, because sometimes, you know, uh, with a lot of with, with zeal, with no wisdom is actually foolishness. You know, people get so excited, they learn something, whatever, and just get to, you know, I'm jumping right on YouTube, I'm jumping right on Facebook, I'm jumping right on social media and everything, and end up saying something that goes against the other scriptures in the word of God. Okay, that's why the Apostle Paul says, I will not subject, I will not allow a novice to, 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 to teach. All right. And so for some for social media has created a platform for any and everybody. It's, you got Hebrew Israelites, everybody else got social media things. But people, we guess why you got to stay with the voice of the Holy Spirit. Stay with the word of God. Keep the word of God. This will allow you to recognize and detect the spirit of covetousness when you see it. Because they come, these false prophets come as sheep. In wolves clothing they come as sheep they come as with the title of Christian all right so I just want to take this time to encourage you I know this is lengthy this is long but the days and times that we are in people of God you're seeing why the messages in certain ministries are being watered down why some of these leaders get on secular platforms and secular talk shows and everything and water the word down it's the word of God down because and they don't take a stance it's because of covetousness, people. And that is a work of the flesh. That is the work of the old man, covetousness, which is idolatry. You never speak against the God that you truly serve. If it's money, you'll never speak against it. You'll never speak against the God of this world because of money. As Christians, we'll never speak against our Heavenly Father because we love him and we have a relationship through Jesus Christ. And so when the Father God has things in his word that we got to stand for, that we got to walk upright and do, we will always stand for it and stand against what God is against. And that's what we got to be in this hour, people. Don't compromise for the sake of money and fame and notoriety. Make sure that that stuff is not in your heart because covetousness will lead people to the lake of fire. Because of greed, because of taking advantage of people, because of exploiting people, because of trying to use the word of God or use the term Christianity, you know, to try to make yourself famous because you want to be famous. So you're going to title yourself a Christian or you're going to say you're a Christian and and you want to uh, use the word of God, or use scriptures and everything just so that you can become famous. You can become some well-known figure through our social media. That stuff will lead you to the lake of fire. Because, and I shared it before in a previous video, covers this part one, how many will stand before the Lord and say, didn't we do this in your name? Didn't we do that in your name? Didn't we do marvelous work? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Iniquity can also be covetousness because you did it for yourself. You did it for your own fame, your own notoriety. You didn't care about exalting Jesus Christ. You didn't care about reaching souls for the kingdom of God and turning them to Jesus Christ. See what true prophets would do. True prophets, they are going to correct and they're going to confront the sins. And they're going to challenge people to repent. And they're always going to direct people to Jesus Christ. They are always going to direct people to Jesus Christ. They don't come on social media to, to give a prophetic word to prophesy for so everybody can look at them, so everybody can say amen, uh, type amen if you if 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 you share this post, you know, uh, um, uh, to three or four people, you'll be blessed. That that ain't nothing but all that uh, psychic witchcraft nonsense. 
type a man if you if, if you know if you send this post to four or five people and they send it to you in your messenger box and you know if you send this to three or four people now, the same thing that this video says it's gonna happen to you you'll be blessed and everything that's a bunch of foolishness that's of the flesh and that's of the philosophies of man stay away from that nonsense it's ridiculous people okay so i just wanted to take this time to kind of warn you encourage you and uh uh to really, you know, admonish you people of God, be on post, be on guard. Don't be taken advantage by sheep in wolves' clothing. God bless you. I love you in Jesus' name.